question is if we can predict if somebody comes to the ED and uh, he has a, he qualifies for thrombolysis or thrombectomy, um, whether we can predict if this patient is going to be severely dependent or dead anyway after three months. The question arises because we see in clinical practice that every third patient um, treated with thrombectomy ends up being severely disabled or dead at three months. With thrombolysis, it's also um, a quarter of patients or maybe a bit less, but a relevant percentage. And, you know, those treatments, first of all, uh, they cause a huge logistical burden. So we need a lot of interventionalists getting up at night time. Uh, we need also a lot of... Uh, um, money to do the therapies and also if we treat the patients uh, they end up in the ICU and then they die after two weeks of ICU uh, which also causes ethical problems um, and we would like to identify those patients where despite the maximal therapy that we can offer um, the, the outcome will be uh, very very poor and this is why we try to combine clinical information such as stroke severity, but also lab uh, values such as CRP and imaging um, using very, very uh, basic imaging that is available on admission such as white matter disease to predict um, this very poor outcome defined as modified ranking of five to six at three months. We found that the discrimination is not uh, bad. So you see, I think was 0.87. The problem is that if we then look into the clinical decision curve analysis, which says, okay, which threshold are we going to accept as a threshold where we cannot offer this treatment, then the model has no benefit. But uh, in, in, we saw that in lower thresholds, so if your threshold would be 0.5, for example, uh, you would already not treat the patient. The model is beneficial. But in our setting in Switzerland, where we have a lot of resources and we want uh, maximum uh, safety, we would only not treat the patient if we are like 99% sure. And at this threshold, the model has really no added benefit. So at the moment, we cannot reliably predict uh, patients that will be uh, dead or severely dependent, but hopefully incorporating other parameters that might be possible one day to reduce the burden of futile uh, treatments.